Ida Ogochinyere, who is also the spokesperson of a caucus of a group of 60 lawmakers, may have landed in hot water in the House of Representatives over a visit to the governor of River State. That one of our colleagues have issued a press statement alleging that the delegation was in River State Government House for solidarity visit with the governor. It is good to pay solidarity visit, but not the visit that members could be misrepresented. He should have made this complaint to you. Which you are right, which of you are right? Are you the one that he referred I to? I attended, I attended. So what do I today? need to explain? There is freedom of association. This house has important issues that pertains to the nation, that bring in personal issues to the chambers. The matter you have raised concerns all of us. If our name was dragged to Portacot, as if the house attended a political function, we need to look into it. We will take a quick break. When we return, I'll introduce my guest. Thank you for staying with the Hallowed Chambers. And my guest today is an honorable member of the House of Representatives. His name is Honorable Clement Jimbo, and he represents Abakatemikbo, Ika Federal Constituency of Akwaibom State. Quite a very interesting <laughs> constituency there. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to have you in the studio Thank once again. Thank you so again. very much. All right. Um, the 10th Assembly will be celebrating its first anniversary this month in June. What has it been like for you, your representation? Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> if you recall, when the 10th Assembly was inaugurated on the 13th of June, 2023, the Speaker of the House of Reps, Assembly led by Dr. Tajuddin Abbas clearly named the house the people's house, meaning it is the house that the entire Nigerian should have a recourse to any time there is an issue that they need the house to address where their rights and their privileges as a citizen is concerned. And so far, so good. From that very first day till last, till yesterday that we are joined to next week, the House has postured that characteristics of being the House for the people indeed. Is it in terms of the different bills that we have passed so far in the House? Is it in terms of the motions that we have moved and have a resolution on them? Is it in terms of even the petitions, the uncountable numbers of petitions that Nigerians have written for us to intervene Either they, they were wrongfully dismissed from their place of work, they have not been paid their entitlements. Uh, one thing or the other, the house has always had a listening ears to Nigerians. And so far, so good. We have not disappointed Nigerians. And how would you rate uh, you know, the leadership skill of um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Tajuddin Abbas? Would you score him high in his uh, leadership? I will say this. Because if you have an experiential knowledge of someone, you'll be able to tell who that person is, not just theoretical, or what you've read, or what people have said. When I, I came to Abuja when I won my election, after the supplementary election, I asked questions. Who is likely going to image the speaker? A lot of people pointed me to him, Many others equally pointed me to others that equally aspired. But the first day I met him in his office, he was sitting down with some friends and eating soya. And we, the moment I entered, I said, my brother, come and join me. To me, that was all for me. A man that expresses such a level of humility, accommodating, having listening ears. There is no time you go to his office that he does not keep his doors open. You call him, he picks. You send him a message, a text message, he responds. So that is the quality of leadership that the tenth house of representative aims for. Because if you look at the combination of this very house, it has never existed in the history of this country where over seven different political parties will come together to form the house of reps across different disciplines and background and experiences. So you need a man that is humble, a man that is exposed, 
a man that has the right temperament to contain the different indices, so to say, of members that have come from all different walks of life to stay under one roof. And so far, so good. Within one year, he has stabilized the house. And do you think uh, your other colleagues share this opinion? Because like you mentioned, seven political parties are being represented Absolutely. in the House of Representatives. Do you believe this opinion is shared among your other colleagues? No, it doesn't really matter because at your best, everybody will not be on the same page with you. But so far, as a personal opinion, as a member of the House of Reps, as a man that I have experienced him, he's a good man. And he has what it takes to take the house to the entire nine years. And what would you say has been your greatest gains as an assembly, as a 10th assembly so far? You know, what would you pinpoint and say these are the huge gains, you know, the 10th House of Representatives has made in the last one year? It is very clear for the fact that we have the liberty, the freedom, to express our different opinions on different issues at different time as a country and as an assembly, that is the greatest gain for me. Uh, because if, if you look at it by and large, the freedom that we are enjoying today, people are paying prices for, for us to enjoy. And the 10th House of Representatives via the leadership of Dr. Tajidi Nabas has equally contributed immensely to it. Let me give you an instance. There are, there are times a heated argument erupts in the house. It takes a man that understands how to navigate those troubled waters to still calm the house and the house still remain the same. If you don't have those qualities, the whole thing will be shifted and you never can know. You never will know where it will lead to. So that is what we have enjoyed and what the leadership has been able to achieve and what we have equally been able to contribute to the leadership for them to achieve that. All right. In the last one year, you have represented the people of Akwaibom Sek, Abak Etim Eko, Federal Constituency. Completely. And how, what kind of development would you say you have attracted to your constituency so far in the last one year? Thank you so very much for this question. First, throughout my electionary campaign, I promised my people three things. First, responsible leadership. Second, effective representation. And third, shared prosperity, and nothing more. And so far, from the first day till date, all our expression in the house have always geared towards achieving these three objectives. How? On the second day of our when we were inaugurated on the second day, I moved an infrastructural motion. It was almost alien to a first time I wasn't being a, house, a local government chairman, a councillor, a house of assembly member, whatsoever, or any political appointment anyway, to, on the second day to move a motion in the house, which we did. And that infrastructural motion that we moved has found its way to the 2024 budget. And when the procurement process is completed, it will be intervened and the people will benefit from it. That's number one. Then number two, we have equally achieved from the 2023 budget many projects that were not implemented, which I was not even aware. But when I was inaugurated, I dived into the budget, looked into those projects, intervened with those agencies, and 100% of those projects have been executed and completed, handed over to the people. Let me begin to reel them out. First is a town hall meeting in Abak Ward 3, Bakuban Ward 3, Abak local government area. It was completely uncompleted. When I intervened, it was completed and handed over to the people. The next one is street light, solar street light, 45 stand of it. I intervened, they were all installed. People are looking at those lights till, as we speak. The next one was free medical awareness that affected over 2,500 of our people. We treated them with minor surgeries. Uh, we carried out minor tests. We gave them drugs to treat those ailments. We have already done that. The next one was ICT training. We trained over 70 youths on ICT, and we empowered them with brand new laptops. Then we intervened in Bosri. Over 80 students were given bursary of 50,000 Naira each. Then over 93 market women were intervened with market grant of 50,000 Naira each. Then we have printed over 20,000 exercise books and given to public schools free alongside with school bags and so many others. I'm not even going to talk about chalks that we have intervened within 
the first one year that we have been in office. Then, talking about the core legislation, bills, motions, and the like. The first motion that I move is on establishment of Commission on Technology Transfer. It has never existed. And it has scaled through first reading. It has been translated for second reading. Maybe when we resume next week, it will be, it will be listed for second uh, reading. Now, what is the import of this very bill? If you look at Nigeria, statistics has it that we are over 200 million. Statistics from Bureau of Statistics equally has it that we have, we are currently using over 200 million handset every day in this country. Statistics equally has it that we have over 12 million cars in Nigeria. And we have a whole lot of millions of devices that use battery, lithium-operated battery and other devices. Then I look at the olden days, when we were young, in our olden days, how did we used to do when there was no fiat money, paper money? It was straight by butter. You have yam, I have beans, I need yam, I exchange my beans with your yam. So I said, since we do not have the technology as a country, so to say, to process our raw materials from raw materials to semi-finished to even finished goods, we obviously still have a lot to talk about on this matter, but we'll take a quick break now. Don't go anywhere. We still have more for you on this program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. Thank you for staying with the Hallowed Chambers, and my guest remains Honorable Claire Menjimbo from Aquaibom State. We've been talking about the gains. Moving from the gains, what would you say you would like to see change in terms of, you know, how the House of Representatives has fared and the Tenth Assembly in general? Well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, so far we have still pa we have passed through the the titting process in the House, in the National Assembly, so to say. The Senate have had their share, and uh, the House too. We have had their share, so that has brought a lot of understanding between interpersonal relationship with members due to so many oversight we've had experiences of going together so but going forward like i listened to a, your sister in a, a station this morning i said one year is not really enough for anybody to really assess the government be it the parliamentary the executive or even the judiciary but Going into two years, which will give the, the administration the ample time to afflict their different muscles, to know their strengths and their weaknesses in so many areas, that one can really sit down and say, okay, they are strong in this, they are weak in this, this is where we really need to reject. So going forward in the 10th House of Representatives, we, we have seen some gaps, some lapses, so to say, and we are prepared to make amends. When we say make amends, it's, it's, it's all about uh, the, the equal opportunity that should be granted to almost every member on the floor to make contributions. If you observe when there is a topical issue that Nigerians want to hear their members speak, the leadership, to a very greater extent, prefer to choose the ranking members to speak. Meanwhile, People like us, we equally have something to say. But then, that is the, the style of the leadership. But we have equally chronicled these observations, and we have thrown to the leadership for them to equally uh, make amends to make sure that we are equally representatives of the people. And anything that is being shared in the house, when I say shared in the house, opinion that must be shared to Nigerians, every member should be given opportunity to have one or two things to say. All right, let's talk about the state of the nation. Um, President Bola Tinubu has also marked or celebrated his first year in office. And even 
he was at uh, you know the a joint session of the national assembly where he came to just give a brief you know cheer to you guys and also brief you guys on some achievements and you know what he hopes to achieve in the coming years are you satisfied with um, his style of leadership so far how you know a leader that will end well do well and end well is in the decisions he is willing and ready to take somebody made a statement sometimes ago he said if you you want to please everybody as a leader just sell ice cream mm. a leader that will do well and end well such a leader is seen in his ability and readiness and willingness to take tough decisions that is meant for leaders. I have no iota of doubt in my spirit that Ashiwajibola Metinibu will do well and will end well because of the decisions we have seen. I have seen him take that many other leaders we are afraid of even stepping into such a red and Ashiwajibola Metinibu so far have done that. For example, one of his ministers, I want to highlight that very well, interior minister, he said he inherited a backlog of over 240,000 passports that were not ready. But he was wise enough to place a young man who knows his onions and completely wipe, com wipe off the backlog. And right now, immigration is even calling people that their passports are ready to come and pick. But it has never happened. Speak in the about of this passports. Country. Passports are going to, uh, uh, items to be used to you know transport people out of the country. And you know Nigerians now are really groaning under some of this economic uh, developments that we see. What? Who, how would you say Nigerians should you know compare and contrast what you say and what they feel? When I was in school. I was taught biology. One of the characteristics of living things is movement. That you see Nigerians, mobile shows that Nigeria is alive and Nigerians are alive. That is why virtually no way you will go on the face of the earth, you will not find a Nigeria, a Nigerian. So that we were inhibited, stopped from expressing that characteristics that makes us a living thing. And a new admission has come to give us and energize us to express that characteristics is something that we should thank God for. Do you know what it means for you to travel to a different country or even in Nigeria and your passport has expired and you want to renew it and it is taking years and so many things that you would have used that passport to do if you had traveled that would have attracted foreign investment to your country to meet basic needs. No, no, that ministry has done predictably well. And let me give it to the Shiwajibola Betinibu. Why? Because he has equally given this young man the opportunity to express his ideas, to implement those reformations. There are some people that when he presents the proposals to him, my brother, go and sit down. And he would have just gone back to his office and threw his hand his vitalistic resignation. But this is a man that gives a listening ears to almost all his ministers. And he, kept, he completely said something. If you cannot perform within one year, we will evaluate you. With you another time, if you cannot still meet up, we tell you leave. Because Nigerians must not be taken for a ride. We cannot uh, uh, be, 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 be allowed your inabilities to perform. Keep us when there are so many other people that can step in there and perform wonders. All right, let's talk about the burning issue on uh, currently confronting all Nigerians and staring us in the face, which is uh, the national minimum wage. There's ongoing negotiation between NLC, TUC, and the federal government. You've heard all sides of the argument. What, what side do you belong? I belong to the sides of government. I belong to the side of Nigerians. I have listened to the effort of government, even the 10th National Assembly, how at the nick of time tried to intervene to make sure the strike, the industrial union was aborted. 
have equally seen the effort of government, the president giving marching orders to the SS, S, SGF to make sure they come out with tangible something. Obviously, let us be very clear. The current minimum wage was not good enough. It was not. And the law simply says every five years it should be reviewed. And that is where even the National Assembly is, is, should, be, should be asked why. But the federal waiting. government is proposing 60,000, although the, the uh, president has given uh, um, NLC the opportunity to go and you know, propose its own figure and come back. So, but what do you think? Do you think that 60,000 is fair? Do you think it's reasonable compared to the economic realities we, we see? 60,000 is about 100% from the previous minimum wage. What Labour is proposing, they started from uh, 615,000, they dropped down to 400 and something, blah, 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 blah. To me, I think Labour is not reasonable in this respect. Because when we talked about minimum wage, I, I look at it. A minimum wage is paid to somebody that has just maybe entered into the civil service from level one to level three, which is a, a school set. So I can't imagine somebody just leaving secondary school and enters a civil service or is employed with his own certification and qualification and you start him with 615,000 and you drop to 490 something thousand. To me, it was unthinkable. So what's, if the person rises from level three to maybe level eight, what would be, what would be his salary? So what are you proposing? Then get what do to you permanent suggest? secretary. To me, I would sincerely suggest 100,000 Naira for a start, for a minimum wage. Looking at the current realities of things, I would, I would sincerely propose 100,000. Now the question is, how many states will have to pay then, if those states do not have to pay, they will have to think outside the box. Because many of our subnationals are largely unproductive because of the current system of government we operate. That is where 10th National Assembly equally come in. We have looked at the bottlenecks. What has stopped our subnationals from progressing the way they should progress, especially the 774 local government system? We have clearly seen the big elephant in the room, which is financial autonomy of local government system. And that is where our governors, and that is where I would say, I would like to use this opportunity to talk to our president, my president, our president. The president is the father of the nation. And no governor should be able to hold this country to ransom. It is time that the president calls all the 36 governors in a dialogue and let them see the reason. Talk to them as a father. And let them see the reason to allow the state house of assembly to pass the local government financial autonomy for the seven seven local local government system to blossom just like states are blossoming. And that is all on the Hallow Chambers this week. Do not forget that you can follow TVC News on all our social media handles. Also, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adeoye. See you next time.